comparing this this one to what's on the block, you can see it looks the same, except this one has the 1203 points. Hello, I'm James Ingram. This video was digitized from a 1992 videotape series named V9202. What we've got shown here is several different uh, variations of the same type of block. The one we've been demonstrating is the one in the front, uh, which is what I'm calling the current model, the Model 944 magnetic block. This is the one that's been used in the demonstrations. It has uh, basically two rheostats, the rear rheostat to control speed back here in the slowdown section, and the uh, forward rheostat to adjust the voltage in the on-off section. Uh, again, just reviewing this rear, rear rheostat that controls the slowdown section. Its purpose is to bring speeds into a big, bring trains into a red block at reduced speeds. The purpose of this forward rheostat is to drop this voltage slightly so that when the block changes from red to green and there's a train sitting on the block, it starts out at a slightly reduced voltage to reduce the the uh, yank on the couplers and the general jerking of the train. Some earlier models of this block, and they're all very similar. This is what I would re refer to as a Model 943. It's basically the same thing. It just has one rheostat. This rheostat controls just the uh, speed in the slowdown section back here only. There is no uh, voltage adjustment in the on-off section. Uh, going back another model to the Model 942, and this is what results if you build a, a block per the uh, drawings in publication P8811. Instead of a rheostat, this has a resistor. Uh, the, resi the, re the resistor is right here. It's a 10 ohm, 25 watt resistor, fixed resistor. And this also has the same purpose of reducing the speed in the slowdown section. Uh, what we found was, however, different engines behave different ways in the slowdown section. This uh, resistor works reasonably well for the small engines, but large engines try to draw more current, uh, and hence this thing when it's got more current going through it drops the voltage further and the uh, large engines tend to stall in the slowdown section which we don't want them to do. We don't want them to stall. We want them to creep uh, through the slowdown section so to better control the speed in the slowdown section we changed from using this fixed resistor to going to a variable rheostat. Finally, and there's not a, I don't have a model of it currently, I've converted them all. The original blocks I built were almost like this but they had no no slowdown section and no resistor at all, and I would call that a Model 941, uh, i.e. no resistor. It would be just like this thing without the resistor and without the accompanying wiring that uh, controls the slowdown section. And these will work. And the circuitry of all three of these is very, very similar. Uh, you can convert one to the other fairly quickly. The basic wiring is all the same. It's just that, uh, like this one, has two that wired in it. Uh, this one just has one, but this one can be fairly converted to the easily converted to this type. Uh, a note about length: the current length I'm recommending on this is 37 inches, which is what this model 944 is in the front. It'll stop most of the large engines. Uh, in the previous demo film on the display layout, you saw it stopping the uh, the uh, red. Uh, RHB electric locomotive, which is a fairly long locomotive. These earlier blocks were built to a 24-inch length, and they will stop uh, the uh, smaller engines. However, for the bigger engines, it can, can be a problem. So that's why we've changed the length from uh, 24 inches to 37 inches. The length can be extended on these also, uh, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Let's say uh, we needed to extend the length on this block here to make it effectively longer in the on-off section. What we could do uh, fairly easily would be to get another 1015U gap track and put it back here and then jumper across this section essentially. The on-off wire which is identified in the wiring draw diagrams of D3 could stay right where it is. It would still control the on-off block. This single wire here I'm pointing at which I believe is identified as wire D6 on the wiring diagrams, we would move that wire uh, back to the far side of this new 1015U, which would effectively start the slowdown block here at this gap. 
so uh, the, this thing would be essentially jumpered across, so it wouldn't be a gap track anymore. It would essentially act like a piece of straight track, so the effective length of the on-off block would now be from up here in the front where it was earlier back to wherever we put this uh, track here. That would be a way to modify this block to make the on-off section longer for a, a temporary basis, basis. If you wanted to make it longer on a permanent basis, this piece here could actually be slid back. You could physically uh, physically unscrew this piece from the block and just slide it back to its new position and uh, move the wires back correspondingly. This switch motor you could detach from the 1015U and just connect the switch motor directly to the board and leave it essentially where it was. And that would result in a longer block also. The length of the on-off block should be approximately uh, the length of your longest engine plus maybe say 6 inches or 12 inches to account for coasting of the engine. So that front block, the model 944, that's sitting up in the front, the, the length of this thing, which is approximately uh, 37 inches overall minus 3 inches on each end, the length of the on-off block would be about uh, about 30, 30 inches long for this thing. That'll stop uh, a single unit of most of the engines. However, if you're trying to actually stop say two white pass diesels that were double headed, you would need to make this thing even longer in length. Note about where these names came from, the 944, uh, 943, 942. Basically what I did is just took the last two digits, the 5094 uh, block signal that this is built around. This is the 5094 unit right here with the semaphore arm. I basically took the last two digits of uh, of that and made it part of the name, and then the 4321 came from the different versions of this thing. I think I had mentioned earlier about uh, adding a second motor on this unit. Uh, the 5094 normally comes with just a single motor here, and there's a 1203 points sticking out the end of it. What I've done is taken those points off of this motor, uh, moved them down to here, and attached them to a second switch motor. This is a standard 1201 motor such as you would find on your electric switches. That way, uh, instead of using one motor to drive both the arm and the points, we now have one motor driving just the points, uh, excuse me, one motor driving just the semaphore arm only, and a second motor driving just the points only. Uh, this basically is done for reliability. The original unit, uh, the original design, has to drive both the uh, semaphore arm and the points, and it does do that, but we found it's a little more reliable if we have two motors. That way each motor has just one task to perform. The, uh, 12, the 5094 unit, as you get it out of the box, This is basically what a 5094 looks like when you get the thing. Uh, here's the 5094 motor and the points. And the uh, arm simply attaches on top of this unit. Something like this. This is what your uh, stock design would look like essentially. Comparing comparing this this one to what's on the block, you can see it looks the same except this one has the 1203 points uh, sticking out the end of it. So this motor, as it's configured in the stock form, has to drive both the points and the semaphore arm. And, and like I say, it does work. It just puts a little more load on the motor, and uh, occasionally you don't always get 100% reliability. And we found by splitting this thing up, we get better reliability. This is a 1203 switch motor here, 1201, excuse me, uh, 1201 switch motor, and actually this switch motor is almost identical to the motor of the 5094, except they've got a different lid on them. I believe you could actually take the lid off of this 5094 and swap it with the lid on this 1201 switch motor and convert one to the other. But uh, essentially to, to get from here to here, what you do is just pull these 1203 points out, the, out of the uh, end of the 5094 motor, it just unsnaps, which I'll do now. You can 
see just by pulling, I was able to pull the 1203 points out of the end of the motor. So you've got a, a hole in the end of the motor where the points came out. However, the switch motor, remember this part here corresponds to that part there. This switch motor has this plate in the end, which will take this plate out of the end of the switch motor to put the points in. Then we can use our plate to go back in the end of the 5094. So I'll pop this plate out of here now. This plate can usually be, just be pulled out fairly easy with a screwdriver. So you've got this little uh, cover plate now that's loose. So you can take this cover plate and now put it in the end of the 5094 motor. Now I've got a, the plate back in the end of the 5094 motor. So this unit here I've converted to look essentially like the unit that's on the block. Meanwhile, we'll take these 1203 points and now that we've made a hole in the end of the 1201 motor, we'll just snap the points into the motor. Now, we snap the points in the motor. Now we've got this unit here identical to the unit that's shown on the block. So those are basically the steps you go through to uh, convert this stock 5094 unit as you saw it when I took it out of the box here uh, to the configuration shown uh, that we've got on the block now. One more comment on these units. This block here is built with a 5095 uh, block signal instead of a 5094. The bottoms are essentially the same except your 5095 has a, uh, a lighted arm instead of the uh, 5094's uh, dual, dual paddle semaphore arm. But they work essentially the same. This thing doesn't have as many moving parts it looks at first glance like you almost ought to be able to put the 5094 arm on top of the 5095 motor. They look very similar, but they won't quite fit as far as I can tell. This unit's made just slightly differently to drive the 5095. I've got one unit, as you can see, configured for a 5095. However, I really prefer the 5094. The problem with the 5095 is all you've got is a light. So if you're looking at the block from the back side, in other words, if you're... Uh, looking at it from that direction there, which would be the back side of the thing, you really can't tell whether the thing's in the red or the green state. And uh, even when you look at it from the front side, sometimes with the camera, you can't tell whether it's red or green. So with these 5094 units, you've got both the, uh, the red and the green lights plus the position of the arms to tell you what state it's in. So uh, that for, that's just my opinion that the 5094 is a preferable unit to use for these rather than the 5095, even though the cost is a little bit higher. The design for these block signals, as we've pre been presenting them here so far in this uh, tape, is a modified version of the standard LGB format. Let's talk about the references for the standard LGB format, uh, starting with their current English version, uh, track planning and technical guide, and a number on this is, uh, let me get it up to the camera here if we can't, it's 00208E, the number's down here. It's kind of fuzzy, but the number on this thing is 00208E. This is their latest uh, technical book written in English. And on page 142 of this book, which I just flipped open here, This shows page 142. They basically show a loop of track uh, with three block signals on. This kind of gives you the basic idea for a block signal. Uh, what they use is a simple, they use more of them, they use on-off version. That, that's where I've deviated. Uh, what they're essentially talking about is what I refer to, and this is my terminology, not theirs, the N plus 1 rule, whereas if N represents the number of trains you're running, the number of block signals they specify is n plus 1. Uh, the example they show here is for two trains, thus they have three block signals. What they're presenting is essentially an interlocked type system, which is actually the, the correct, theoretically correct way to do it, like a more like a prototype system, whereas if any 
engine shuts down, uh, the whole system will shut down behind it because things are interlocked. But the problem with this is uh, if you get more trains, let's say if you want to run four trains or let's say six trains with this n plus run one rule for six trains, n would be equal to six. The number of blocks given by n plus one would be seven. So you have to put seven blocks in the loop uh, to accomplish that. Um, on my one display layout showed earlier, there was six trains running with two blocks. Um, wiring up seven blocks would be a horrendous task for a display layout. So the trade-off you get between this this traditional design shown here and the simplified design that I'm presenting, that the trade-off uh, is with uh, the design presented presented by these drawings and in the, and in the publication P8811, the simplified design, you, you can use less block signals to run more trains. The disadvantage of the simplified design is it's not is safe, it's not interlocked. This is a totally interlocked system the way it's presented. However, you get up you do get up more starting and stopping because they don't use slowdown loops, they just use essentially on off sections. So what I've done just to recap is I've taken the basic LGB design uh, as shown here and I've kind of wandered off on my own tangent and uh, what's being presented in the film and what you see on these display layouts in the film is my own design or my own modification of the standard LGB design. Uh, this basic wiring thing can also be found in their previous book, the German version. That's this book 0026N. The numbers up here in the corner. This is essentially more or less the predecessor of that book we had up here a minute ago, and it's in German. But uh, on page uh, 106 of this German version, they have the same basic uh, diagram written in German. So you have to use the uh, English translation guy, which is this orange book that they supply to translate it. But basically, it shows the same thing for a system with two trains. They're showing a loop of track with three blocks. There's also a third reference to this uh, that's floating around. That's his booklet, 0021 uh, EPL Technique. And on page uh, 19 of this book is, again, that, that same diagram, and again in German this time. But again, it shows the same loop of track with the three blocks to run two trains. So these three references give you the basic uh, LGB design, which I've started with and then modified to come up with the uh, simplified, what I call the simplified version that's presented in this tape and in the uh, written materials presented here. Now we'll cover some of the final notes that pertain to this automatic block design. Uh, as we were talking about a minute ago, we were uh, noting that the traditional interlocking design for uh, n trains is to have n plus one blocks, so there would be seven blocks for six trains with this traditional design. Uh, this model 944 block that's being demonstrated in this tape operates multiple trains on one block, uh, and you can also use additional blocks to maintain spacing on long runs if necessary, uh, as was demonstrated with that one display layout with the two blocks in series. The advantage to this simplified design is it's simpler. Uh, you have less blocks typically for a layout, and you have a little smoother operation with the slowdown section. Uh, the disadvantage to this is the block has to juggle trains when there's more than two of them, and it may not be able to handle engines with large speed differences if there's more than two of them. As we demonstrated, it can handle two engines with large speed differences with relatively little problem by proper positioning of the track contact T2. But if you're trying to handle three or four engines with large speed differences with this uh, simplified design, that might be a problem. Basically, this is an LGB 5094 uh, block signal with two noticeable modifications. Uh, the first modification is we've added a second motor, as was demonstrated earlier, uh, for reliability. And make a note that LGB says the 1700 track contact can activate up to two maximum switch motors. And there's a reference to this in uh, page 23 of the German publication 0026N. That was the thick German book we looked at a minute ago. 
and also in the page two of the translation uh, for the 0021 EPL technique that we looked at a minute ago. I have not been able to find this information in the New English publication 0028E. Uh, second main difference is we've added this 10 ohm 25 watt adjustable rheostat to reduce the voltage in the slowdown section. As mentioned, the stock LGB design is simply an on-off type of design for the blocks. I do not have a slowdown section. Uh, this 944 block presented here has a slowdown section to, to produce a smoother operation of the trains. You can build these blocks with uh, two rheostats as demonstrated here, uh, or one rheostat, or just a single resistor as was shown on that model 942 block, or no resistors, which would be a 941. You can build them different ways. Uh, the most enhanced operation probably comes with the model uh, having two rheostats, the, the model 944 as shown. And note that there's no electronics in this thing, just simple electromechanical parts. Sometimes people observe these things operating on display layouts and they think there's a computer or something controlling the layout. There really isn't. It's just uh, all electromechanical stuff, basically the 1700 track contacts and the 1201 switch motor. And this is a, a simplified design. No complicated electronic circuitry is involved. Just simple two-wire AC and DC circuits. This block system is constructed from off-the-shelf LGB and Radio Shack components. Uh, construction, as described in these plans, involves uh, no soldering except for the rheostats. And the rheostats are ohmite rheostats, by the way. Th th that size of rheostat is not available from Radio Shack. Uh, all the connections except for the rheostats are screw connections. There's no complicated construction or assembly involved. And uh, I do all my work on my kitchen table the same place I'm doing this videotape right now. I, I live in a one-bedroom condo, so I do not have a shop. So it's basically uh, hand tools like hacksaws and uh, hammers and pliers that I can drag to the kitchen table that I use to produce these blocks. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the block is modular. The block is designed to be modular, easily installed in about a minute. It has only one external connection for the 16-volt AC power, which uses a quick disconnect speaker wire. All parts are mounted on the base except one remote track contact, that's track contact T2, which remains permanently connected by a speaker wire. Again, just recapping the differences between the standard LGB5094 unit and the unit described here, uh, changes to the basic LGB design are, one, adding a second 1201 motor to drive the 1203 points, two, adding a slowdown section that's reduced voltage by using a rheostat. We originally had a resistor on the earlier blocks, now we have a rheostat. Also, uh, some units have a second rheostat for startup and that, that's the 944, as demonstrated in these tapes, has the second rheostat. Three, we've modularized the design by mounting all the parts on a piece of 8-inch wide by 37-inch long piece of wood. And four, uh, we're using just one block by itself to con control, i.e. maintain separation between up to five trains on the same track. I've used just a single block to control five trains, and I use the two blocks as shown in the one film to separate the six trains. Other comments about the construction. Again, the uh, components are stock LGB and Radio Shack components. Uh, it's a stock 5094 LGB block signal when we start. Uh, we add the second motor to drive the points separately. We move the points from the 5094 motor over to the 1201 switch motor as demonstrated earlier. One motor does not always have enough torque to drive both the arm me mechanism and the points. Uh, with the two motors, one motor drives the arm, that's the, the 5094 motor, and the other motor drives the points, that's the 1201 switch motor. Uh, and the LGB switch motors can sometimes be tuned to improve the operation, uh, sometimes by taking off the lids and centering up the rack on the pinion, uh, which is inside we can get a little better operation. I, I believe the rack and the pinion are supposed to be centered, but uh, I've occasionally got some of them. They don't seem to be centered, and I found by taking them apart and fiddling with these, 
Uh, sometimes I can get a little bit better operation. And this whole thing is portable. The automatic blocks are pre-wired as much as possible to be quickly connected. For quick power connections, we use uh, phono jacks, i.e. the Radio Shack uh, RCA type photo jacks for the AC power. And I've been using Tamiya RC car connectors for my DC track power. This enables me sometimes to hook up a whole display layout without even touching a screwdriver because all my connectors are uh, quick, just push together type connectors. There's also alternate forms of train detection you could use. You could also use electric eyes. Uh, in fact, we'll demonstrate one of these in the next section with our uh, electric eye type block. And there's also current sensing devices on the market that are probably possible, one being DALI that you see mentioned. And I am not familiar with these other type of devices. Again, reviewing the advantages of having a slowdown section. The slowdown section is an enhancement copied from the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum's HO layout that has been added to the original simple on-off design that I first started with. The addition of the slowdown section makes the layout operate much smoother, as trains are usually only slowing down at the block, not, not making jerky stops and starts like they do with the simple on-off block design. Let's mention uh, outdoor operation. These units can be used outdoors, but you may have maintenance problems. Essentially, these things should behave like a 1201 switch motor, since the uh, 1201 switch motor is what's driving the 1203 points, and the 5094 unit is essentially a 1201 switch motor also with a different uh, uh, lid on it. Uh, I myself do not do outdoor railroading, so I am not an authority or even knowledgeable on outdoor operation other than what I hear and see by talking to other people. Uh, however, if you've got any uh, electric switches outside which will have the 1201 motor on them, a block should behave similar, similarly to how those switches behave as far as reliability. Uh, Sherman Zell in San Jose, California has 10 blocks in his layout. He's approximately 700 feet of main line it runs both in his front and backyard, uh, di divided up into 10 blocks. So just by the sheer number of blocks he has in his layout, he probably would be considered the, the one of the authorities on block operation outdoors. And Sherman reports he has a need for periodic cleaning with these uh, blocks. They, they do get dust and dirt in inside them, particularly after a storm, he says. Uh, Tom Flynn in Louisville, Colorado, uh, who had the one layout we showed earlier, on the tape uh, of a block si signal operating outdoors. He says he has problems with the 1700 track contacts sometimes going bad over the winter time. In the uh, APS electric eye unit, which is described later in the film, uh, which we use as a basis for our electric eye block, may be a more reliable unit for outdoor operation and should be seriously considered for that. Another trick which some people use uh, is to increase our operating voltage to 24 volts. The uh, LGB transformer puts out 16 volts, and w which is what these normally run on. All my blocks that I've been demonstrating, I operate them on the standard uh, LGB 16 volt AC. However, people tell me that these uh, units can be operated without damage on 24 volts. And uh, some people that are running them outside have increased their voltage just to try to get a little more reliable operation to counter the effects of uh, problems they have from outdoors. <laughs>